Nick Wright now joining us live. Calls first things first. Okay, so um, I said this yesterday. 19-year-olds have a right to be nervous. The first time they speak in public, their first job interview, or their first game of magnitude in the United States when they're the most talked about player. I thought Wemby was anxious, and when you're nervous, it sucks your energy. I thought by game two, he settled down. But I, you know, my takeaway was, yeah, he's, he's really, really good and really disruptive defensively. What was your take? Yeah, very similar. I, I just think the American sports viewing public is almost being primed to be disappointed by this kid, no matter what he does, because it is being, he is being labeled, has been labeled on draft lottery night, the greatest prospect, in, not in the history of the NBA, in the history <laughs> of a North American <laughs> sports. Right. Colin, you, you were old enough to remember, that includes Tiger Woods, <laughs> who was four years old on national TV <laughs> draining putts. That includes Serena Williams, who I don't think ever lost an amateur match. That that includes, yes, of course, LeBron, but also Kareem, who won a combined seven state or national titles and lost three total games in high school and college. Like that, we're not being fair to what this young man will be. I do think he will instantly be a top-flight defensive player. And I think offensively, it will be a lot of what we saw this weekend, meaning a night where he looks out of his depth, gets pushed around, is sloppy with the ball, and a night where his shot is falling and he looks confident. But the the hiccup, even if you assume health for him, yeah. which is very tricky because the history of the league, guys over 7'3", almost all of them dealt with injuries, but assume health for him. The tricky thing will be this. He does not yet have a good jump shot. He has a good-looking jump shot, but he does not have a good jump shot. Until he develops that, his easiest buckets are going to be coming at the basket, and it does not seem like right now that's where he's comfortable playing. So I, my concern with Wimby is the same it's been for the last three months, which is a decade into his career, he could be a one-time league MVP, a one-time champion, and already a Hall of Famer, and people will be like, well, that was disappointing. If that's the expectation level, I think we're being a little unfair to him. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I said earlier, not a coincidence that Popovich signed a massive deal. They pulled him out of summer league. That's I've been right. told the Spurs are going to control him. Minutes, games played. They're going to empower Popovich. They're going to do it their way, and they don't care what Nike or the NBA or agents think. They're going to control him, the minutes, the games, which I, by the way, am I'm totally for that. To your point, bigs get hurt, especially when they're young, they're thin. Giannis Embiid early. So I, I love it. Now, Boston has a history. Often African-American athletes have struggled with it. Like, it's historic. It's disgust. I live near Boston. Beyond that, for me, it's just different. They say fences make good neighbors. They don't say that about New York. They say it about New England. It is different. It is provincial. It is sort of, you know, they, they live in their own, like, reality. That's fine. Um, but it is interesting that Damon's like, no interest at all in Boston. It's a pretty good organization. Do you think Dame and his agent now have reached a point where they're not being realistic, that if that was the second place, that's a pretty good opportunity with Tatum and Porzingis and others, and Jalen Brown potentially if you moved him or not? Yeah, well, I mean, sure, but Miami's a better team in a better city with the best coach as opposed to a guy who might be closer to the worst coach. So why would he not want Miami over that? Like, th here's the thing on that. I Now, Boston, you're right, has a long, well-earned reputation on being very difficult for black athletes. Yeah. But there are, listen, Boston does not have a monopoly on racism in this country. Any, you go any place, you can find it. So I am not going to lay that entirely at their doorstep, but it does appear to hurt their ability, whether it's fair or not, to be a destination for NBA stars in free agency or in this version of trade free agency. Also, Boston, it looks like, does not want to trade Jalen Brown. 
if they don't, for Damian Lillard, if they don't want to trade Jalen Brown, then Miami has the better offer. My issue with so much of the kind of reporting and speculation around the Damian Lillard trade is there is almost unanimity that Miami's offer sucks. Now, I don't think it does. I think it's okay. I don't think it's great, but I don't think it's a terrible offer. But here's what I do know. It's the only offer right now. People are like, well, Boston can make a better one. Well, they haven't. Philly reportedly is not offering up Tyrese Maxey, which means they don't have an offer. The Clippers want to get involved without offering Kawhi or Paul George, so they don't have an offer. So there is no other offer. Now, could a team like Minnesota, as I talked about last week, offer Carl Anthony Towns? Could a team like New Orleans offer Brandon Ingram? They could, but they haven't. And until that happens, right now what we have is the only team in the game is Miami. It's also where Dame wants to go. And I think Portland is trying to drum up a market. But Dame's agent has done, I think, a good job of making it clear he only wants to go to Miami. And if you're another organization and he's about to be 33 years old with $210 million left on his deal... I think that's going to cool the marketplace a bit. He's going to end up in Miami. It it might take some time, but I would be shocked if he ends up anywhere else. And also basketball-wise, Colin, it does fit perfectly. Dame, Jimmy, and Bam are three. You might find a more talented top three players, but you won't find three that cover up each other's weaknesses and fill in the blanks better than those three would. Um, so yesterday or the day before Chris Paul was interviewed by somebody and, you know, he, he, it, it was a tough situation where somebody goes, are you coming off the bench? I'm not sure what you're supposed to say as an athlete. I don't know what I would have said, you know, as a perennial all-star and the guy that literally took yeah. Phoenix from bad to championship viable that took Harden and made him yep. a team that should have beaten the Warriors. What is he supposed to say? It wasn't like. Mello, who never won, didn't elevate teammates, was clearly not the same player. Chris, in his worst year last year, on many nights, was still very, very good. Um, Do you see, though, um, do you see a little bit, he's an alpha, a little bit of pushback on the chemistry here if he doesn't start, or will he? Well, I don't think he can, I don't think he can start. Because here's the thing. So, Steph, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond, Looney. Who you send into the bench? I, the answer would be Clay. They're not doing that. So he can't start, right? Like this is, I, I, you're going to send Wiggins to the bench and play super small? No, you're not going to do that. Draymond obviously isn't coming off the bench. And you're not having Draymond as your starting center and putting Looney to the bench. So I do think CP3, from a basketball perspective, has to come off the bench. And on NBA 2K, I think this is a perfect fit. Have him play 20 minutes a game, keep him fresh, run the offense when Steph is on the bench, and, you know, hopefully he is healthy for a playoff run because his usage has been so low in the regular season. In real life, that is tricky. Not only because, so Chris Paul three years ago led the Suns to the finals. Two years ago led the league in assists, and they were the one seed. And last year was top three in the league in assists. And people thought they were a fringe contender even before they brought in Kevin Durant. Now you're saying play two thirds of the minutes and you are backing up a guy that you once considered your rival, a guy that you have a real history with. So I I think it's going to be one of Kerr's toughest juggling acts. And I do not think it is out of the question that the reason they made this trade was we had to move off Jordan because the history with Draymond, it was not going to work. And now with Chris, we can try it out, but it ultimately, he is an expiring contract that if we then wanted to move him along with one of the young guys like Jonathan Kaminga, maybe mid-season we can uh, acquire a player that fits better or acquire someone over six foot nine inches because Dario Sarge right now is the only person on the roster that fills that bill. So I don't I think it is going to be a experiment that might not last the entire season. 
I got to throw something at you. Jay Mack and I had a disagreement earlier. So Justin Jefferson was asked about the best quarterbacks in the league, and he gave a list of the five best quarterbacks in the league. And Kirk Cousins was not on the list. I presume he was sixth. So uh, of the five best quarterbacks he mentioned, they were Mahomes, Rodgers, Burrow, Hurts, Allen. Great list. Don't need to argue about it. Should he have lied for the relationship? Well, this is interesting. <laughs> Gosh, that's an interesting question. It is. Because if he's asked who is the best quarterback, he can't say Kirk. Right. Because then it's just like, okay, that's ridiculous. That's like the Tyree Kill stuff with Tua. He throws the prettiest ball I've ever seen. <laughs> He's the most accurate. It's like, okay, now no one will take you seriously on anything. Top five is you have enough wiggle room that you could <laughs> kick out Rodgers and include Kirk. Yeah. I respect it. I respect the fact that he was just like, nah, man, these rankings matter. This is my word on this. I'm giving it. I, gosh, that is such a fascinating thing. I didn't hear. Did you think he should have lied, Colin? No, I, I back Justin Jefferson. It invalidates the list if he just start like if he said, okay, I think it's Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, Jalen Hurts, Kirk Cousins. We're like, uh, okay, that's that would be like naming the five best restaurants. And then you get to, you know, you name these Zagat rated restaurants. And then you get to five and go uh, five guys. Uh, it's like, well, it's a burger yeah, joint. It's not really, you don't consider it that. So uh, sure. J-Mac thinks, he says he teaches his children to occasionally lie. Uh, sometimes, you know, the white lies. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, but I, you, so I. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, listen, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I do agree that, okay, listen, it can't, as you would say, Colin, lying can't be your fastball, <laughs> but it's nice to have <laughs> access to it. It's nice to have that in your bag. And I agree with J-Mac that part of good parenting is making sure your children understand it's available to you when needed. I do agree with that. On the specific quarterback rankings, I think, I think it's okay because I don't think Kirk Cousins considers himself top five. Thank you. I think that is more yes. of the issue. I think, it, I think if it were a top ten yeah. and he left him out, yes. I think that if... If someone says to you, Colin, who do you think, take yourself out of it, is the best sportscaster in the world? Yeah. If you don't say me, I'm not bothered at all. But if they were like, hey, give me your top 10 and I don't make it, I'm wounded. Because I do think I'm in that list. So, uh, so the um, now my big issue, of course, is that he has Josh Allen on it over the prince that was promised Trevor Lawrence. But that's an issue I'll talk to Justin about privately. Um, but I think leaving Kirk out is fine. Yeah. For the record, the knock on Kirk Cousins is lack of confidence in big games. So to Nick's point, I don't think he thinks he's top five. That's the knock on no. him. It's like, no. I'd rather have a guy that Baker thought he was like second. You know, I didn't love Baker, but I appreciate the confidence. Like Kirk could be like nine. Oh. He thinks he's 13. That's why he shrinks in big games, maybe. Oh, uh. That's mm. a good take. Mm. That's a good take. So then I guess that might actually, though, and not to go too far down this rabbit hole, but you might have just argued yourself into J-Mac being right, that if Justin Jefferson really wants to win, the only way to get <laughs> over the next hump is for Kirk Cousins' confidence to go up. So he maybe should have just said, it's five Kirk Cousins. I'll take that over everything and just walked away. I don't know. But I like that topic. That is a great July topic. It really is. We might use do that on the show. <laughs> we it. might have to throw out our rundown. Uh, you, you have my blessing. There you go. Nick Wright, first things Thank first. Thank you. Uh, Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.